Wendy's CFL on TSN is brought to you in part by Wendy's, the official hamburger of the CFL. Wendy's, it's better here. By Molson Canadian, I am Canadian. And by Rogers AT&T Wireless. Imagine getting more from your phone. Ladies and gentlemen, would you now please rise, remove your hats, face the Jumbotron, and join Kira Lee Fogg as she sings the Canadian National Anthem, accompanied by proud flag bearers, Mo Elowanibi of the Blue Bombers and Glenn Young of the Eskimos. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide oh canada we stand on god for thee god keep our land glorious and free One of the rising stars in the Canadian music scene, Kira Lee with the singing of our national anthem, 19 years of age from Winnipeg, and a, a debut CD just released. And a beautiful day in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Happy Canada Day, everybody. Rod Smith, Lee Patterson, 29 degrees Celsius, and the wind could be a factor in this one. It is hot but very breezy from the northwest, 38 kilometers per hour. The head coach in his third year now with the Edmonton Eskimos as head coach, Tom Higgins, took his team to the Grey Cup last year. Uh, narrowly losing to the Montreal Alouettes. And Dave Ritchie with his club off to a fine 2-0 start. Two games on the road. They get to come home for their home opener. Tenth winning his coach in CFL history. And as you can see in his fifth year as head man of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Dave won Grey Cup as a head coach, strangely enough, when he was running the BC Lions back in 1994. But he likes his club. He's got lots of speed. So does Edmonton. This should be one heck of a football game. And Leaf Winnipeg loves to strike quickly they've had good first half so far this season and sean fleming will be kicking the bombers uh, won the toss they deferred and the eskimos elected not only to kick but to give the bombers the win for the first quarter a little surprising uh, you saw the wind coming behind the bombers right now at 38 kilometers per hour uh, very gusty when you and i were down the field but uh, edmonton wants to start on defense obviously and that ball really hangs up in that breeze comes down about the 35 taken down right away no return at all as that is taken by tyson st james well he was the mvp of the cfl two years ago off to another great start kahari jones 19 for 37 308 yards but no interceptions once again he hasn't thrown a pick so far this season in the two games his numbers against the ottawa renegades last week loves to hit milt stiegel number of great targets robert gordon as well chad Plummer in this game what a good game in the west final last year against the eskimos in a narrow defeat on first down faking the handoff rolling out to his right is kahari jones Looks downfield, but just elects to take off, and he slides for a gain of about four or five yards. Here is the offense that he has to work with, mentioning those targets. Chad Plummer inserted, because Mike Sellers, their big fullback, cannot play, was injured in Ottawa on Friday night. And up front, a change at left tackle, Dan Getvey, getting the start. And uh, Dave Much, right tackle as well. Here's another look at that play, Leaf, to start things off. 
Yeah, you, know, you heard Matt Dunnigan talk about their lack of first per, uh, first down production last week against Ottawa, and already good defense. So you get Harry Jones breaking containment, and you only get five yards. I think you're happy on these. On that second and five, throwing off to his right, but no, it's incomplete. So on third down, the Bombers will be punished. Well, it's going to be interesting today, Rod. Up front, the Edmonton Eskimo front four. The old, smallest guy is six foot five. So some big horses coming in the face of Kahari Jones. A switch in the secondary. Uh, Robert Grant will play the middle safety. Sean Garrett moves to halfback. A good ball hawking secondary, and they are going to have their hands full because Winnipeg's got a great receiving core. In fact, both teams have terrific receivers in this game, and. Good players all across the board this afternoon. Troy Westwood, who had a nightmare game in Ottawa, hunting the football and with field goals, gets that one away nicely. On the return for the Eskimos, it's Winston October who's wrapped up, taken down around the 20. But Leaf last week in Ottawa, on Friday night, Troy Westward had one punt blocked. He had to basically swallow another one, had a field goal blocked as well, returned for a touchdown. Renegades really hurt the Bombers on special teams. Yeah, they really did, and it was funny. Uh, they played Friday night. They flew home Saturday morning. Guess who got the day off? The rest of the team, the punt team, had to come in for two hours of film work to try to sort everything out. Bob Cameron, the great punter all-time for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, was the first to call Troy Westward. His words of advice were, sometimes... It doesn't have to be pretty. Just get it off if you feel the pressure coming. So uh, I'm sure Troy will take that to heart. The bombers working on that. And you speak of Bob Cameron. It's Bob Cameron Day retiring after 23 seasons this year. First and 10. Eskimos. Ricky Ray handing off to Mike Pringle. Left side. And good Pringle yardage for a first down right off the bat for the Eskimos. It's Pringle and Troy Mills in the backfield for Ricky Ray. But look at the receivers. Jason Tucker with a brilliant touchdown grab against the Stampeders last week at Commonwealth. And then up front, a veteran offensive line led by that left tackle. Freddie All-Star, Bruce Beaton, West finalist for top lineman last year. So a good game. First down, boy, how many times do we see that with Mike Pringle in the Alouette days? Busting one early in a game, and especially late in a game, too. Well, that's going to be the commitment that the Edmonton Eskimo offense has to make. You know, with Mike Pringle in there, you've got to give him the ball 20, at least 20 times again, as you see a first down pickup by Pringle on his first carry. But Tom Higgins has to say, hey, listen, with Pringle, he's a workhorse. He gets better as the game goes along. And if he's going to be in the lineup, he has to touch it at least 20 times a game. He did it last week against Calgary, just shy of 100 yards. Uh, and uh, Mike Pringle, that's what he brings to this team, but you've got to use him wisely. It means maybe not throwing as much for Ricky Ray, which, again, isn't probably a bad thing. His numbers against the Bombers since 1995, when he was a member of the Baltimore Stallions, and, of course, later to Montreal. So many great years. He'd like to erase the memories of last year and get it going with the Eskimos. Pringle again. So two running plays to start things off, left side, for the Everton Eskimos. Well, a terrifically quick defense for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Great people up front. Tyson St. James back in again today, and you'll see some shifting in that terrific linebacking court. Terry Ray will get in. Tommy Europe is out at middle safety, but Mo Kelly, who's a terrific defensive back, he comes into the lineup to start at the middle safety. Antonio Banks, he will be the dime back. Greg Clark, what a terrific player he is. A couple interceptions in their opener out in Vancouver. But again, you'll see a few different looks from Winnipeg today as Chris Schultz mentioned back in the studio. Second and long at the 35, Ray under pressure. David Benefield nearly has him. He gets it away, and it's incomplete. Intended for Scott Robinson and a late flag on the play after Ray was taken down by Benefield. Well, I don't know about this one. I mean, the flag was thrown. Benefield took him down a little late. Let's hear Major what Butstein foul. says. Roughing the passer. Winnipeg 56. First down. Uh, I don't know about that one. I mean, you love to protect your quarterbacks, and I'm all for that. But you'll see a great look at it here. Is this roughing or is it not? I mean, here goes the ball. The ball is gone. I guess it is. That's a good call. Ball was well gone, and Benefield just has to let him go. He could have let him go. He didn't, taking him down, and the Bombers pay the price as the ball comes up near midfield at the Edmonton 50. A first and ten for the Eskimos here in the first quarter. At Canada Stadium in Winnipeg, part of a doubleheader on Canada Day. Faking that inside handoff to Pringle. Ray, with time, gets it away and complete to Rick Walters. Across 
into Winnipeg territory and another first down for Edmonton. This drive continues. And Tom Higgins talked about yesterday how he's been so disappointed in his team's first quarter production and he's got to be happy now. Three first downs in a row, uh, penalty to Bennyfield, but Ricky Ray, when he gets to the outside, that's what I like to see for him. Easy sight lines downfield. He's got trips to the wide side, and he picks out dependable Ricky Walters to pick up the first down. Walters just sitting in the hole nicely. A good target for Ray to find, and the Eskimos are on the move. A gain of 12 for a first down inside the Bomber 50. Edmonton on the move. Handing off to Pringle again. Right side, more good yardage for Mike Pringle. Takes it down to about the Winnipeg 40. It'll be second and short. And don't think that the Edmonton Eskimo offensive line doesn't like to do this. I mean, you want to be a pass catcher all day, catching those defensive linemen, and uh, you get your back, your receivers blocking downfield. But Dave Mud or Chris Morris, rather, on the right side, opens a big hole to the outside, and you got Kevin Leftrude inside opening up a big hole. But they want to tee off and tee off early, and you know the battle of the trenches in this game is going to be so important. Three carries, 21 yards of the day for Pringle. A flag going. Troy Mills on the carry. But just as the ball is snapped, the flag came out. Uh, Mills would have enough easily for another Edmonton first down pending the call. And it will be a first down. The Looks like the indication is against Winnipeg. Offside. Winnipeg number 20. Penalty is declined. First down. Ricky Bell penalized on that play in the offside. So penalties working against Winnipeg in this opening Edmonton drive. A couple of them now. Although they did have the first down anyway there with Troy Mills. Part of that veteran talented backfield for the Eskimos. Faking the handoff. Looked like he wanted to shuffle it back to Pringle and gets it away to Terry Vaughn. And a nice catch and out of bounds just shy of another first down. Okay. Well, a nice drive being put together here by Ricky Ray and the rollout to the outside. Really wants to hit his back Troy Mills quickly, but David Bennyfield had a grab on him and he has enough time to wait for the route to develop and Terry Vaughn with a nice catch to the outside. But, you know, you're on the road, you're one and one, you're playing in a very tough ballpark as Winnipeg Stadium is here and uh, you want to get off to a great start and they truly are. This is some drive and bear in mind it is against the, what's been a pretty strong win, but that play goes nowhere at all. David Benefield on Troy Mills has him wrapped up for nothing. And a third down now. And lots of pressure up the middle. Here comes Brian Clark right up. He's going to shoot the gap. And he meets Troy Mills about two yards deep in the backfield. And all of a sudden, a great drive comes to a screeching halt. But look at Brian Clark, 48. He, be, he almost there for the handoff. But they're gambling. And look at this. They're going How for it early. This? They're a couple of yards away. Winnipeg says no, not in their house, not right now on Canada Day. Tom Higgins says that's okay. Doug Brown, Brian Clark, they stop Pringle. And after an impressive drive, it comes up empty. Empty Edmonton, turning it over on downs. Wendy, CFL Live from Winnipeg. Well, look at the effort right here of Doug Brown. He's going to get some penetration. And then Rylan Wickman comes right here. That's a tough reach block for Comiskey 67, the left guard. He wasn't able to get it. Mike Pringle has stopped, and the Bombers take the turnover. Had they tried the field goal, albeit against the win, it would have been only a 31-yard try. But they gambled, and it did not pay off. Play fake. Jones. Nearly wrapped up by Glenn Young and has no choice but to head out of bounds. Dorian Boos chasing him out. So some lost yardage for the Bombers on first down. Dorian Boos mentioned Leaf is one of the reasons why Terry Ray was let go. Later picked up by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers taking on his old team. But Boos, they love his speed and his strength and his size. And they need him now especially more with Elton Payton injured in there. Well, absolutely. I mean, Tom Higgins tried to, you know, say all the right things about Terry Ray yesterday in his release. But he said, look, we needed more defensive linemen. And uh, the way it's turned out, a rather astute move because Boos is now in for Payton, who they needed desperately. Boos had been playing inside a tackle and moved out to rush in. On second down at a shotgun. And it's completed to Chad Plummer, but it is just shy of a first down. Inside still, the Bomber 35 around the 34. It'll be third down and short. 
Now they move the sticks. They are calling it a first down now. And this is a big addition to the lineup today. Watch Chad Plummer coming down here on Crutchfield. Just a simple hook. They double to the inside. That leaves one and one outside. And they're hoping for big things from Plummer. They're expecting double coverage on Stiegel and maybe a little bit to Bobby Gordon's side. But Plummer hurt Edmonton in last year's Western Final with five catches. He was spectacular. They hope to get big production from him today. On first down, handing off this time to Charles Roberts. His first carry of the day. Picks up about five more yards. Up across the 40. Charles Roberts injured, had a little turf toe to deal with last week, and not much of a rest to get ready for this game, but that's a talented running back. Well, he sure is, Rob. I mean, you know, I look at this offense, and sure, they got stars all over the board, and everybody thinks about Stiegel MVP, Kahari Jones MVP, but I really think Charles Roberts is the guy that makes this go because he's terrific out of the backfield in receptions. He's a great runner. He's missing Mike Sellers, the big blocking fullback in front of him, but I think he's a real key to this offense and how they produce. Picked up five, so it's second and five for Winnipeg. Roberts again. Knifes his way through and gets close to first down yardage, shy about a yard. With the versatility. Both uh, running with it and catching it as well. So far this season, pretty good numbers so far for number one. For and I, I really expect to see that four catches improve in a hurry because I think he's a great guy to run. Trips to the field as the third receiver in. Get him the ball quickly and let him turn into a running back after he catches it. And behind Gene Gaines, who is a defensive coach, is the offensive coordinator there. Just to your right, Paul Lapolis. His second full camp as offensive coordinator, so they've been able to put even more stuff in their package. This will be the second punt of the day for Troy Westwood, with yeah. least in October back for it. And interesting to watch the uh, punt protection, especially on the right side. That's where Mike Sellers was, and uh, of course he got in there today. This is just a beautiful spiral by Westwood chasing October inside the 10. And finally taken out across the 20 to about the 22. A 56-yard punt for the Blue Bombers. No score here in our Canada Day Bash from Winnipeg. One of the key injuries for the Bombers of this game, Big Mike Sellers, their 280-pound fullback. He got injured, a hamstring injury against Ottawa, and they certainly miss him today. And another player, there's Tom Europe leaf uh, injured in the Ottawa game. So they've had to, Dave Ritchie's had to juggle the lineup a little bit here. Yeah, hamstring injury for Tom Europe, so you never know. They're always kind of day-to-day, week-to-week. But Mo Kelly's in the lineup. Antonio Banks now, the dimeback, is in as a linebacker. So Winnipeg shuffling a lot of folks around early. A lot of veterans on defense and good depth pays off there. Complete pass. Ricky Ray to Ed Hervey. And close to a first down. Well, I think Ricky Ray's done a fabulous job, and I'm not sure whether he wants to hear it verbally that he's number one. I don't believe that anybody has told him that he's number one, but all I know is he started and played and taken every snap on offense for them, and uh, I would have to think that he's uh, number one. They've got some capable backups. Uh, no question about Bart that. Bart Hendricks there. Yeah, absolutely, and Jason Moss as well. So uh, lots of depth at quarterback, but you know, clearly to me, Ricky Ray is the guy. Well, he, uh, Ricky Ray struggled a bit. He got a lot of pressure. And there's Jason Moss, who was the undisputed starter, I suppose, undisputed at the start of the season. Got injured and then lost his job to Ricky Ray last year. But uh, last week in the first half, it was a struggle for Ricky Ray against the Stampeders. They put a lot of heat on him, but then he was 14 of 14 in that second half as Calgary pulled away and beat the Stamps by 10. Funny, uh, Rod, on second and short, Winnipeg goes to a three-man front. Uh, four linebackers, rather an interesting uh, way to approach it short yardage situation but they took Tyson St. James out and brought an extra linebacker and usually on second and long it's more conventional. Well it certainly didn't pay off there as Ray bowled his way easily across the 35 for a first down for Edmonton as their drive continues. Dave Ritchie. Boy he likes his team doesn't he? <laughs> you and I sat in his office yesterday I and mean, he just grins from ear to ear when you talk about team speed and tenacity and uh, all kinds of great stuff uh, going around his locker room. And this is a coach that's had some good teams over the years. He talked about the 94 Lions and he coached the Montreal Alouettes for a while as well. For a year. Dumped off to Troy Mills, close to another first down. Edmonton against the win is certainly having no trouble moving the football. Well, this is a great look. Here's Troy Mills right here. He just slow blocks in and then releases to the outside. Ricky Ray comes out, and I love this kind of style because not only it's uh, play action freezes people, but you can get your back the ball quickly and allow him to get a few extra yards, and it's a great 
first down call, and that's something that Tom Higgins has been concerned about. And they get great production right there, second time, second and short. And once again, it's a keeper by Ray, who lunges for a little bit more. He didn't hear a whistle, so it looks like he has enough. Only needed about two feet. Once again on first down, when you freeze linebackers right there, I mean, Pringle's your guy, all of a sudden you send to slip the fullback out into the flat. I mean, that is a tough play for even the best defenses to try to stop, and pretty easy ball to complete. Is it my imagination, or is this Sacramento 1993 with <laughs> Troy Mills and Mike Pringle in the backfield? Ten years ago in 93, they were indeed Troy Mills and Mike Pringle, who had left Edmonton. He started his CFL career with the Eskimos and then went to Sacramento before going on to Baltimore. Well, speaking of Pringle, there he is. And he is going nowhere there. No gain on first down. Well, it's interesting going back uh, 10 years ago, uh, Mike Pringle in 1994 left to go to Baltimore and begin his great play there. And then, of course, when he left, Troy Mills got to carry the ball more, and that was his first year, first 1,000-yard season. First of two times he did that was uh, 94 when Pringle left. Strangely enough, 10 years later, they're reunited here in Edmonton. And there is one other player on that Eskimo team, uh -huh. defense. I know who. Can you think of it? That played for Sacramento as well. Malcolm Frank. Number 10, Malcolm Frank on the corner for the Eskimos today. Ricky Ray calls time as the crowd gets going. Timeout for the Eskimos on a second down and nine. Higgins and the Eskimos on the move again here in a scoreless game in Winnipeg on Canada Day. Tom Higgins looking on. Still no points to show for all their efforts, which have been pretty considerable in this first quarter for Ricky Ray and company. Throwing this time much deeper and overthrows his man, Terry Vaughn. So, John Fleming will be coming into punt this time. A nice pattern by Terry Vaughn. That ball was just... Uh... A little overthrown, and Ricky Ray, here's Terry Vaughn here. He's going to end up going to the corner with Milo Lewis. Milo Lewis trailing. Good pattern right there. As Lewis's angle wasn't the greatest, but the ball just slightly uh, overthrown. Tough to do into this 40-kilometer mile an hour wind, but Ricky Ray shows you the strength of his arm. Well, they followed a four-minute drive, though, with a six-play drive, eating up another three minutes on the clock. So one thing the Eskimos are doing well is eating up a lot of time on that clock against the wind. Oh, absolutely right. Fleming to punt. Inside is 40. That win, once it scoops it up, he doesn't get much on it. And a no yards penalty coming up here against Edmonton. Deontz Whitaker on that return for the Bombers. This is the Blue Bombers' home opener and their first game on a new surface. More on that now from Greg Musselman. Greg? Okay, thanks, Rod. This is called the Astro Play Plus, and it is actually sewn into the surface. It's like a fake grass. It's actually sewn into the surface, and it's got two thicknesses of rubber that are here, and it actually makes it quite soft. Now, for those that uh, know the Winnipeg Stadium before, before it became Canada Stadium, it uh, was actually just like a concrete uh, uh, with an old, worn-out rug. This is a very good surface now. It cost uh, $2.1 million dollars and took six weeks to install. The players absolutely love it and intend to practice on it for the rest of the season. And they've actually even sewn in the logos uh, right into the uh, field here so that they can practice on it. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Greg. There's Milt Stiegel, who probably likes this new surface, too, with his first catch of the game. But, uh, you know, I'm sure the players like it, Leaf. What kind of footwear do they use on this compared to the other stuff? It's all over the map. Uh, Ed Irby, for example, is wearing half-inch cleats, about nine cleats on each shoe. The linemen are mostly wearing AstroTurf shoes. Uh, Sean Fleming, the kicker on his plant foot, is wearing a nubbed sort of AstroTurf shoe. So I think there you see the half-inch cleated, uh, and I think that's probably the best. If Which I was... is more than what you use on natural grass. Absolutely. So Stiegel with the catch for a first down. Winnipeg in Edmonton territory. And the pass is batted at the line of scrimmage. Knocked down. It will be second and ten. Well, Wade Miller's filling in at fullback for Big Mike Sellers. And watch the job that he does right there. Picking up the blitz from Kelvin Powell coming up the middle. Now the ball's tipped. And that's one of the things we're going to see today because Edmonton's front four, the smallest guy, six foot five, Dorian Boost tipped that one. But pretty nice job by Wade Miller in a backup role today, picking up the blitz. Second and ten now. Bombers, the Eskimo 45. Zero, zero. Pump fake. Flag down. Dumps it off to Roberts. Has 
some room, gets near a first down yardage. But a penalty is going against Winnipeg. Appears to be holding. Holding. Winnipeg 34. Second down repeated. Well, Wade Biller did a great job that time and got caught. A little too good. Unfortunately, uh, picking up the blitz has spoiled a nice run by Charles Roberts. And, boy, the, with a minute 37 to go, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers would love to get something on the board with the wind at their back here in the first quarter, but a penalty setting them way back. Back to midfield. To look at Wade Miller. In at fullback for the injured Mike Sellers. And a big second down and 20 now for Kahari Jones standing in the shotgun. Lots of time. Steps up, has a man. Big first down to the 25. Marcus Howell on the receiving end. A gain of 30 yards. Marcus Howell, fourth on the club last year with 38 receptions, really came into his own, has turned into a fine non-import slot back. His sixth catch of the season, and what a big one this is. Not many times can you convert on second and 20, and he finds the gap, a great strike by Kahari Jones, and the Bombers keep this drive going. On the first down, Jones to throw again with another flag coming out, completed to Robert Gordon. But this will go against Winnipeg again, and so far, penalties are just killing the Bombers in this first quarter. You're assuming it's on the Bombers. The indication came. Looks like it'll be going back again. So you got the young Holding. eyes. <laughs> Winnipeg 54. First down repeated. Matt Sherrod in the left guard, and he's got some big guys over top of him today, and Steve Charbonneau and Albert Reese. Deep Charbonneau, a terrific Canadian uh, defensive tackle. Seventh year in the league, was originally with the Montreal Alouettes for a number of years, came over as a free agent. 6'5", 290. They're all 6'5", except for Reese, who's 6'6". He's the big guy on the block. And you're right, that could cause some problems and has well, caused some problems for Kari Jones. You know, the wingspan gets up well over 10 feet when you're trying to step up into the pocket. Low snap of the shotgun and this first down and 20. Complete to Milt Stega inside the 15. And every time the Bombers get in trouble after a penalty, they get out of it this way. 21 yards in that game. Well, and watch the great protection this time for Kahari Jones. And this allows him to step right up into the pocket. Boom, watch him step up. A nice lane created, a good pattern by Stiegel. And all of a sudden, the Winnipeg offense are really starting to make some plays. Another look uh, down in the trenches at the protection. And see Kahari steps right up. A lane created for him. And good sight lines downfield to find his inside receiver. Last week against Ottawa, he became the all-time leader in reception yardage for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, passing James Murphy. End zone look for Roberts, gets turned around, and they want a flag on that, and the flag is dropped in the end zone. Al well, Singhor Mobley got all tangled up with Charles Roberts to the right of your screen here. And you, you see if Charles Roberts go down, the flag is in the air and the Blue Bombers. Illegal contact on a receiver, Edmonton 27. First down of the So the Bombers get another break on this drive. Wow, key play to convert second and 20 where they find Marcus Howell down the middle. And against a tough defense like Edmonton, you're not going to do that too many times, but they did, and they would love to punch one into the end zone here with no time left on the clock with the wind at their back here in the first quarter. Comes down to the seven and a first and goal, Winnipeg. And Charles Roberts takes the handoff. And Shannon Garrett gets to him as the quarter comes to an end, but Winnipeg is in business. You wouldn't think between these two teams who'd have no points on the board yet, but that appears to be about to change as we take it back to Dave Randor and our Wendy CFL Live Studio. All right, thank you, Dave. The numbers after one quarter, and maybe most significant is the what you don't see, no points on the board yet, Leaf, but uh, fairly, uh, fairly close so far. Well, I thought Edmonton did a great job controlling the ball into that wind. In fact, you know, we questioned their strategy at the beginning 
you know, giving Winnipeg the ball and the win, but uh, heck, who can question it when, when you have a time of possession like that and uh, do a great job. Now Winnipeg knocking at the door here. Well, what a good hit by Singor Mobley right there on Roberts. A tough guy to bring down near the goal line. He's just so slithery down there, but Mobley squared up and made a nice stop. So they start the second quarter. Second and goal from the two. Handing it off to Miller. But no, Edmonton stuffs him, and this will make it really interesting with a third down and goal coming up. With a fullback, Miller coming in, replacing Mike Sellers. He got that carry, but he couldn't get it into the end zone. Well, a bit of a surprising call to go with your backup fullback, Wade Miller, and give him the ball down the goal line, but excellent penetration. You'll see 91, Dorian Boos is in the backfield and makes the play, and boy, he's a big horse, 6'5", 292. He slashes down, and uh, Dave Ritchie is not in a gambling mood, as not, was Tom Higgins I in the first quarter. just going to say, on a third and two, or third and three, uh, Higgins went for it. It didn't pay off but they're down near the goal line and Richie wants the first points and you know these aren't slam dunks this is a tough angle for Troy Westwood that'll come down inside the tent the wind has calmed down not that it would be much of a factor at this distance anyway he spotted around the eight yard line Troy Westwood no problem at all a little chip shot and finally we have points, although the Bombers might be walking away a little disappointed. They don't have a major score. Three on the board. Winnipeg. Well, Dave Ritchie chose not to go for the touchdown, and I don't know if that's more surprising than Tom Higgins' decision to try to go for it when it looked like a field goal was more obvious. Well, I think Dave Ritchie has a great respect for the front seven of the Edmonton Eskimos on defense and chose to take the sure thing. So, with a play fake, Ricky Ray to air it out on first down. Good coverage down there by the Bombers, intended for Jason Tucker, who had a circus catch, a, just a beautiful game against Calgary at Commonwealth Leaf last Thursday night, including one touchdown catch in particular, where there was coverage all over him. He got turned around. And it was, it was well, he lost his helmet and everything, but I mean, that was one of the most spectacular catches uh, I've ever seen. I mean, I look back, and I believe it was the... 87 Grey Cup in Toronto, Tony Champion made this twisting, diving catch in the end zone, which was spectacular, but Jason Tucker's uh, would equal any on any highlight reel that you will ever see. And that was one of two touchdown uh, receptions he had in that game in their victory over the stands. Ricky Ray on second down now. Finds Terry Vaughn. Can't get to the first down yard if they have him down inside the 45. So, once again, Fleming will be coming back out to punt. And you talk about extra effort. You know who was downfield on that uh, play to make the final tackle was 97, Doug Brown. And, uh, you know, Terry Vaughn is a tough guy to bring down in the open field. But that's the thing. Force him back, as Milo Lewis did into the middle where you get some help. But look at 97, Doug Brown. Defensive tackle, 6'7", 302. Talk about hustle. That's why he is an all-Canadian defensive tackle and a great guy, good player. So Fleming to get it away, only one man back for Winnipeg. It is Dion Winnicker, who was just inserted today into the uh, lineup because of Mike Sellers' inability to go. So using him on punt returns as well. A beautiful oh. punt with the wind in his back. <laughs> Fleming, Winnicker can watch this thing roll right through. Actually does pick it up right near the dead ball line and tries to return it. <laughs> tries to get oh! it. He coughs it up. Oh my goodness! And Did the calling, bombers ever escape? They're calling that they got out to just outside. It's going to be first down on their own one. What a bad play! Oh, special teams continue to plague the bombers. Oh. They got a break there though. They still have the ball. Here's what Dave Ritchie. <laughs> That's the reaction he had with Deion Whitaker after his attempt to return that punt out of the end zone. Well, there's Mike Sellers, who's uh, injured today. He had some words, and then, of course, Les Brown had some words, and I think Les kind of said something like this. Deion, if you want to be on the next punt instead of the next plane, <laughs> don't ever do that again. Well, you know, they're lucky to have it out to their one, but obviously this is not ideal. They could have just given up the point. Instead, he tried to get it out, and credit Dave Donaldson after it was fumbled in the end zone for picking it up and getting it out. Charles Roberts won't get it out, though. Dorian Boost wraps him up for a safety, so instead of giving up one, the Bombers give up two. Yeah, and that's probably the reason why Dave Ritchie didn't gamble down at the other end. That front four of Edmonton, Randy Chevrier was in that time at tackle, replacing Charbonneau, but boy, what penetration. Albert Reese 
Another 300-pounder. Look at the penetration on the right side coming. Boom, there's no chance for Charles Roberts to get out. And Dorian Boost cleans up. And two points for the Edmonton Eskimos. And boy, Dion Squitaker, uh, he'd love to have that punt return over again. No question about it. He'll be thinking about that one for a while as Troy Westwood talks to him about it, too. Well, you get two teams that are so close like these two. It's uh, mistakes that are going to decide the outcome, and that's clearly a gift of two points. And if ever the Bombers were sensitive about special teams' mistakes after what they went through last Whoa. week in Ottawa, it would be a day yeah. like today. Yeah, that was a nightmare a week ago. And, but you know what? You, you have to look at one of the, the bright side. Uh, they did not play well in Ottawa last week, but they won the game. So, I mean, hey, they're 2-0. and oh, You can't argue with that. Let's go back one more time. And you know, Deion Swedeker should have just down at this point. In fact, they're lucky the touchdown wasn't scored against them because they did pop up the football. With the wind, it was an 86-yard punt by Fleming. There's Ray passing on the first down and completing it to Terry Vaughn. Good for a first down for the Eskimos. who got the two points and, of course, get the ball after that safety given up by Winnipeg. And with the wind now in the second quarter, and as Leaf mentioned, uh, what was good for Edmonton is to hold hold them without uh, any points at all when they had the wind when Winnipeg had it in that first quarter. Well, that's Danny Machocha, the offensive coordinator for Edmonton, and I uh, want to talk briefly about him for, after this play. Shotgun in first and ten. Getting it away, completing it to Vaughn. Lots of room to run. Skips over a defender and is still going down the sideline and out of bounds. Edmonton in business. Down around the 25 of the Bombers. Well, when you anticipate lots of pressure, as Edmonton does from the uh, Winnipeg front seven today, you've got to throw underneath every once in a while. And who better to get it to quickly than Terry Vaughn? I mean, this is just terrific. Watch Vaughn right here coming across. Easy ball to complete. He gets away from the traffic underneath. Good block from Ricky Walters. And... Uh, that's great execution. Every year, and that was a gain of 40. Every year since 1995, at least a thousand yards receiving. Eight straight years of CFL record. A good game that time. Looking for Herbie near the end zone. And just beyond his reach. Well, going back to Danny Machocha, who's the offensive coordinator, he, he held that capacity in Montreal for a number of years and, of course, knew Mike Pringle so well and one of the reasons why Pringle ended up coming to Edmonton because he's the kind of offensive coordinator that understands what he has to do to Pringle. Now, Pringle hasn't touched the ball many times uh, here in the first half, but he knows that he's going to at some point have to start getting the ball in his hands and what better guy to have in your backfield than Pringle when you've got a lead late in the game. That was first three carries at 21 yards in this game. Another end zone look. Oh, it's intercepted. It is picked off Milo Lewis with the interception and another big defensive play in this ball game. Still no touchdowns. Edmonton was looking, but they are denied once again. 3-2, Winnipeg and Wendy CFL Live. The latest big play, courtesy of the guy in behind Brian Clark there, Milo Lewis, second year at Alabama with that interception in the end zone. Lee. Well, here's Jason Tucker right here, and he's working on Lewis right here. Pretty good move, and as he goes to the corner, I mean, he's got a step, and this is a ball that has to be thrown way long. I mean, you're throwing with the wind, and that's pretty inexcusable, that interception thrown by Ricky Ray. Jason Tucker gotten in behind that coverage, but not enough on it. So Kahari Jones and the Bombers take over. Charles Roberts left side and good yardage up across the 30 to about the 33. You know, it's funny, when you look at Edmonton's offense, uh, they were plus two in the turnover takeaway category uh, against Calgary. They won the game. They were minus one against Calgary. They lost the game. They've got two turnovers already in, uh, in this half, so... Clearly, when they don't turn the ball over, they play well, and when they do, they struggle. But you can say that for most teams. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> True enough. So a second down and short now. Ah, movement. And the, the cry from the Eskimos and Randy Chevrier that he was drawn offside. Jones doesn't think so, I guess. 
And he would be right as they signal offside against Chevrolet and the Eskimos. Edmonton 66. First down. And with that, automatically a first down for Winnipeg. First and ten. Mixed up. Somebody got a route wrong, but throws it into some nice open area where nobody is there. A oh, good job up front for Kahari Jones that time. His offensive line uh, getting very aggressive, stepping out and taking on the rush early. And miscommunication with Chad Plummer and quarterback. So Jones now four for seven on that one. And second down. Overall, coming into the game, he's for 515 yards, over 5,000 yards passing last year. They set up the screen nicely to Robert, still on his feet across midfield, and a big first down Winnipeg. Get him the ball and watch him go. Well, Rod, this is one of the prettiest screen plays you're going to see. Watch Matt Sheridan on the left side and Dan Getby. They sit back, they sit back. Now they peel outside and watch the fun start. They invite those linemen upfield and they come through. But Matt Sheridan, you're going to see to the left of your screen. Watch 54. What a cut block right there on Glenn Young to the outside. And that is just terrific. Gain of 20 yards across midfield to the Edmonton 53. Winnipeg 3, Edmonton 2. Those tall D lineman, Rahim Abdullah, bats that one away. It's the second time this game that Gary Jones has had a pass knocked down. Well, there you see, six foot five, and I mean, it, it, you are taught this from day one. If you can't get the sack, if you can't get the pressure, throw the hands up, and there it is, right there. Watch the hands go up, and when you jump, you're six foot five. Your natural's around ten. He's probably up closer to eleven feet with his vertical leap. That's a big guy to try to throw over. That's why as offensive linemen, you try to create passing lanes for your quarterback, and it's tough to throw through these guys. Second down now. And first down now, completed to Robert Gordon inside the 40. So Winnipeg answers. And this drive continues against the breeze here at Canada. Soft zone that time by Edmonton, and they just leave Bobby Gordon all alone. They got Milt Siegel coming across the field, and there it is. Nobody can recover in time, and they just pretty much Malcolm Frank ignored Bobby Gordon on the outside, and he's got his first catch of the afternoon. Bombers living by big plays, eating up the yardage through the air. That one again of 15. Roberts on the ground. Nice and open. Had a big hole and ran through it nicely to get it down to the 20, and another first down. What a good job on this series by the offensive line. You got Eric Wilson, the right guard. Watch him come on the kick out and the trap. And Charles Roberts has got a huge amount of running room, but the offensive line of Winnipeg on this drive is really taking over. A great block on the screen by Sheridan and a good trap block by Eric Wilson. You know, it's interesting. The best drives of this game by far have gone <laughs> left to right against the win. This one continuing. A look to the end zone for Stiegel, and he is well covered. And the fans want a flag, but no. Well, it's interesting. We talked to Tom Higgins, the head coach, yesterday about Shannon Garrett, and he's been playing in the middle safety, and we thought Robert Grant might play the halfback, but he said, look, don't be surprised if you see us make a switch. And Shannon Garrett, who has played a lot of halfback, and at the top of your screen there you see the fight with Stiegel, plays a halfback today because... He wanted to match up against Milt Stiegel. He wanted to take on the challenge, and that time, pretty nifty job. They've had some good matchups over the recent years. Garrett and Stiegel, this drive started after an interception in the Winnipeg end zone of the 25. Oh, taken down. Kahari Jones is sacked. Dorian Boos gets the job done. Filling in on that spot for Alfred Payton, who's gone for the season and does what Payton did so many times. Gets the sack. Jones taken down for the big loss, third down. 
Well, you're so right, Rod. The front four are doing a terrific job getting upfield against the uh, Winnipeg offensive line, and Dorian Bruce coming all the way from his right end position around the back to trip up to Harry Jones and get the sack. And this is really going to test Troy Westwood. I know it's only a 38-yarder, but this wind is strong enough, and this was about Sean Fleming's limit uh, in the warm-up when we watched him. So that sack looms large from that standpoint. Westwood's hit from 50 and 49 this year. It really hangs up, but it has enough. Gets through the uprights and three more on the board for the Bombers. Winnipeg 6, Edmonton 2. 5.44 to go until halftime. For every quarterback sack in today's game, Curolator will contribute the quarterback's weight in food to a Winnipeg food bank. And so far, over four tons of food have been donated as a result of quarterback sacks, courtesy of uh, the Curolator Tackle Hunger Program with the uh, CFL. And here is a sack that took place just moments ago. Dorian Boos on Kahari Jones. Ricky Ray. And just before the ball came in, incomplete. He wants the call, he doesn't get it. Well, Winnipeg's going with their dime package so far. Antonio Banks, the dime back, is in now in the first down situation, expecting Edmonton to throw. Watch the break. Watch the break right here by Marvin Coleman coming on the football. You be the judge. Did he get there early? I'd say that's pretty good timing. Very good timing. Boy, as a receiver, you've got to come back to the quarterback. Scott Robinson didn't, and that's why he couldn't make the catch. Second down now. Eskimos trailing by four. And they blow it just as the ball is snapped. Interesting what Winnipeg is able to do on defense. Right now, they have... Illegal procedure. Edmonton, 67. Second down repeat. The left guard, Dan Comiskey. Yeah, well, you've got Terry. Look at Terry Ray's in the lineup right now. You've got Mo Kelly in at safety. you got Antonio Banks, the dime back. But, I mean, Terry Ray can cover, obviously. He's so eager to play against his former team today. Mo Kelly can come up, but they can also blitz. So there's so many different looks they can give Edmonton with this defense. And that procedure call at second and 15, and Ray trying to get away. Picks up some yardage, but not nearly enough for the first down. Gets up near the 39 of the Eskimos. Sean Fleming in the punting unit will be coming back on. I'll tell you, when I see these two teams play over the years, you get used to big numbers. Uh, an over-under is 60 points. To see only eight on the board is a little startling at this point. Well, yeah, and look at the look here. I mean, here's Terry Ray up here. Here's Brian Clark on the inside. And then let it go because they give you the blitz look. And then uh, they all... They all pick up a man and back out of there, so essentially only three men coming that time, but they still get good pressure on Ricky Ray. And Fleming to get this away, and remember Deion Whitaker was the punt returner before, but after that mistake trying to take it out nearly cost Winnipeg, it is Marvin Coleman, who is certainly used to returning punts over the years, back in there. Whitaker not in for that punt return. biggest thing you worry about when you're kicking with a wind like this is am I am I gonna outkick my coverage what terrific coverage by the Edmonton special teams and I mean that is just desire but that's not a lot of fun with that wind it was a 56 yard punt the previous one leaf went 86 yards well look at the gap here between the uh, the pursuers and Marvin Coleman I mean you've got a good 15 to 20 yards before most of the guys show up and they really do a good job throwing a blanket around uh, Coleman and I mean, that is just a terrific net, a good punt by uh, Fleming, and a great cover by his team. Boy, I've said great a lot today, because you know what? These are two great teams. I know it's they only 6-2, and, and we no expected... no touchdown scored in it yet. We expected more, but you can just see the talent on this field. It's certainly not for a lack of offense. There has been that, and another good game by Charles Roberts, who's had a pretty good first half. Gain of eight yards for Winnipeg. Well, Charles Roberts, the all-purpose leader from a year ago with over 2,900 yards. He hits the hole so quickly. I mean, all he needs is a little crack, and he is gone. And, you know, he's a small guy, 5'6". He is tough to find sometimes as a defensive player. You're a linebacker. You get trapped in behind all those big linemen, and all of a sudden, boom, Roberts is in your face, and you can't make the play. And 
Seven carries, 47 yards is a pretty good first half. And he's had about 20 in the receiving end as well. But he'll have nothing there. Calvin Powell taking him down, finishing that off, but they only needed about a yard, less than a yard, for that first down. Well, there's the distribution that Kahari Jones has with his team. I mean, everybody involved, no chance to fall asleep in this group. Uh, of course, Milt Stiegel, as you might expect, leading the way. But, you know, what I like about uh, Winnipeg, and I know Sellers is out today, but uh, he'll be back in with that grind. Between the two backs last year, they had 118 catches. And I know Paul Lapolice, who's this guy right here, there's Paul in his second year. Uh, that's big for him because you got so many receivers that you can clear out. When you can give it to your running backs quickly, uh, boy, that just adds to your offense like you wouldn't believe. And this is a team that statistically anyway, it's like one of the greatest offenses last year, although it was all through the year. I think they ranked at or near the bottom in all rushing categories. I don't think Dave Ritchie could care less. Well, I mean, you know, we talked to Ritchie about meaningful statistics yesterday, and obviously uh, rushing yardage totals are not a meaningful statistic okay, to them. So they certainly pass to run. I mean, uh, most of the time you would think of Edmonton as a team that likes to run to throw, although not today so much, but uh, Winnipeg clearly passes to run. But they're taking no chances uh, on that third down and short. They got nothing on that most recent Charles Roberts carry, so... With Westwood standing inside his 20 at about the 17 to get this one away against the breeze. Under three minutes to go on the clock and keeps it low and driving. Winston October at his 45. Wrapped up and gets no more. Edmonton football after a 35-yard punt against the breeze. 2.46 on the clock until halftime. The holiday doubleheader, Wendy CFL Live, and don't forget Wendy's at the half for all their insight and analysis. Dave Randorf, Matt Dunnigan, Chris Schultz, and Jock Climby, and uh, they're going to unlock the studio pretty soon. Let those guys head west for Damon Allen's return to Vancouver. And they're looking forward to that, I'm sure, and we're looking forward to hearing from them at the half, and it's coming up 2.46 of the clock here at Canada Stadium in Winnipeg, the Bombers. You see Winnipeg and Edmonton, the score 6-2. I assume Gretzky has uh, the pair for Edmonton, and <laughs> Howard Chuck's got the hat trick for the Jets. Go back 20 years. No touchdowns yet in this game. Terry Vaughn has had a couple of catches so far, and with that one gets across midfield, first down Edmonton. After this game, heading off to McMahon Stadium in Calgary. And the two teams that lost to the two teams that are playing here in Winnipeg today. Ottawa taking on the Calgary Stampeders who had some good first halves, but still no wins to show for it. The Renegades at 1-1 one one coming in, coming off a tough loss to the Blue Bombers on Friday night. That is coming up, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, right after this game with John Wells and Glenn Sue. Well, here. just over, sorry, with over two minutes to go, Winnipeg's gone to the three-man front, extra linebacker and the dime back in, anticipating pro by Edmonton. And what do they do? They cross up and run with Pringle. Lots of time on that clock to keep this drive going. A lot of adjustments. Uh, Dave Ritchie almost has too many choices to make at certain times. Uh, that series he began with uh, McGriggs on the outside, who turned into be a rush end on uh, the last couple of plays. But now in second and short, they bring in Oosterhaus, the big defensive tackle. Number 77, Winnipeg. This time it's Troy Mills in that second and short after the eight-yard carry by Pringle. And he'll be close to it. I don't know if he has quite enough. Yes, they indicate it is. A first down. The drive continues late in this first half for the Eskimos. Well, I think Tom Higgins has to be thrilled with uh, what's gone on here in the first half. His uh, offense did a terrific job in the first quarter against the wind, grinding out seven first downs. And now they have a chance, trailing uh, by four points, to go into the lead, get into the locker room with the lead if they can put this together. Little play fake. Dumps it off to Pringle. Gets ridden hard out of bounds. Shy of a first down by Brian Clark. To about the 30. Well, they, they, you know, what you try to do is catch Terry, or Mo Kelly did the outside to come up here and bite, but he didn't even think about it. He just said, hey, I've seen this play action before, so I'm just going to come out and stay with the back. And, you know, really, they, they really made something good out of what looked like a pretty poor play to begin with. So Pringle getting 
more active now as he was in the early part of this game. Knocked down. David Benefield knocks down Ricky Ray's attempt. And it'll be third down. And a field goal situation for Edmonton. Well, you know what? That's why these defenses are so tough and so good. They do the little things well. Here's Bennyfield right there. Boom, what does he do? He can't get even close. But again, like Abdul did earlier, he puts his hands up and knocks the ball down, and that forces a field goal. What a terrific defensive play. I mean, those little things never show up in a box score, but are great contributors to the final outcome. This would be to make it a one-point game. Edmonton trailing by four. Sean Clement for the 38 with the breeze in his back. So he'll have a lot of extra help. Down it goes. No problem at all. Three on the board for the Eskimos. And now it's a six to five game with 120 to go on the clock. More touchdowns at this point of the game last week for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in Ottawa. Milt Stiegel caught a pair. And he was great in man coverage against the Renegades. And Milt Stiegel got to 500 receptions for his career and 9,105 yards. As mentioned before, that made him the all-time leader in Winnipeg Blue Bomber history in terms of yardage. And he's not too far behind James Murphy for the all-time uh, receptions as well for Winnipeg. Should all happen this season. The number one receiver in Blue Bomber history, Milt Stiegel, number 85. Out of the shotgun. Robert Gordon. First down, Bombers again. 114 on the clock. And that's a good switch. They used Bobby Gordon as a slot back that time. He's got a lot of room to work, and he makes the break to the outside, but... Winnipeg starting to move around a lot of different people on offense and Bobby Gordon in the slot to me is a good play. Jones, another confusing route. Looked like Marcus Howell was the closest one to it, but he had one earlier with Chad Plummer. Some miscommunication as that one falls with no one with the Bombers in the area. Well, Rod, you just documented uh, Milt Stiegel and what he's done this year. Bobby Gordon uh, in week one out in Vancouver had some kind of night with a couple of touchdown receptions. And he didn't play in the playoffs last year. Had the broken arm, only played two games last year. And so it was uh, good for him to have a full training camp for Paul Lapolice, the offensive coordinator, to really see and understand what this guy can do. On second down now, under pressure. Taken down, and we got a hand on the face mask. Steve Charbonneau to be penalized there as he takes down Kahari Jones, so this drive will continue despite the sack. Major foul, face mask, Edmonton 93, first down. Wow, that's huge. I mean, what a tough break for Edmonton. I mean, obviously he's not trying to do that, but he grabbed it. It's a great call by the officials, but with 104 remaining, Kahari Jones was in all kinds of trouble, and we're going to get a free first down out of it. And an injured player down for Winnipeg. 104 on the clock. Winnipeg with the first down here in Wendy CFL Live. Make sure you don't miss Wendy's Friday Night Football on TSN as Damon Allen is back at BC Play Stadium as a member of the Toronto Argonauts. And the gang's all going. Dave Randorf, Matt Dunnigan, Chris Schultz, and Jock Limey. Yes, it's safe to put them out on the road. And they'll be there at BC Place for that one. What a night that should be after playing with the BC Lions for a long time since 1996, winning a Grey Cup there in 2000. Many, I'm sure, have fond memories of Damon Allen as a Lion. But, of course, once they got Dave Dickinson, that all changed. Dan Getve, who is filling in at left tackle for the injured Scott Harper, is injured himself. And so the newly acquired uh, Andrew Carter, who was just picked up in a trade with the Calgary Stampeders a few days ago, will get his chance. Yeah, left, left tackle is so critical. I mean, that's the blind side for a right-handed quarterback. And so far today, Getve has done a nice job filling in for Harper. And I suspect we will see him back. First and ten. Bombers at the Eskimo 49. 
Just over a minute on the clock until halftime. With a one-point lead. And again, I gotta Jones tell you, is finding a lot of empty space, isn't he? I don't know if we're going to see this, but I mean, Chad Plummer is in a bit of a fog out there. I mean, he has been, I've been watching him a lot because I thought they would go his way a fair bit. He's been kind of half speed the whole game, and I really have no idea. He's at the top of your screen. I don't think you're going to see it, but I have no idea what he's doing. I mean, as a quarterback, you're hoping that he's going to be in the right area when the pressure comes, and, you know, you're trying to put the ball into a spot, and, hey, there's no Chad Plummer, and that's about the third time his way that he just seems like he's not sure what he's doing. And the second time in this drive that Jones has had one of those. That one... But a chance to be caught, but Milt Stiegel couldn't hang on, throwing a bit behind him, so it'll be a third down now. 56 seconds on the clock. Well, I'll tell you, as a quarterback, this is what you look to. First of all, don't run it yet. You look to the hole, and then you put the ball into the hole and hope that your receiver goes and gets it. See, that's what Kari sees. He says, hole, and now my guy's got to go and get it. It was a little behind Stiegel, but you get a great look at what the quarterback sees. Sometimes you don't even see your receiver. You just throw it to the hole and know that he's hopefully going to go and get it. Hands up! Low driving punt, very good into the wind down at the 20. October. The breeze had really picked up once again. Edmonton football, and interesting to see what they decide to do with 48 seconds left deep in their own end. Well, two quarterback system. Remember the days? Gee, it goes so far back. I think even when you played, Lemmerman and Wilkinson back I in the seventies. I, I remember those two guys like a bad dream because every year they seem to break our heart in the uh, Western Final. But they've had great success. Uh, Wilkinson to Moon and Moon to Dunnigan oh in '83, and then Matt Dunnigan and Damon Allen and uh, Allen and Tracy Ham as well. And it certainly worked in the seventies and eighties as one groomed the other. And they've always seemed to have harmony there, and I see no reason why that shouldn't continue. Walters with his second catch of the day, and he's greeted right away after catching that football. Well, I think Ricky Ray's got to be rather pleased. I, I think one thing that he may want to talk about with uh, Danny Machucha, his offensive coordinator at halftime, is, hey, we've got to establish the run just a little bit more because that's a big part of our offense that we really haven't got going. Back-to-back -back receptions for Rick Walters, and that one for a first down up around the 45, 31 seconds on the clock, and they have the wind. I'm sure they're going to be doing their darnest to see if they can get in field goal range, if they can get it down around the 40 or 45, they'd certainly have a chance. Briggs and Terry Ray so and that's the beauty of Winnipeg's front seven they can only they, they sometimes drop some linemen out and give you all kinds of different looks that time Doug Brown actually dropped in the coverage and McGriggs pass rush got his hand up and tipped the ball away but so many different players in and out of the lineup with so many different looks it's very difficult for a, an offense to uh, make all their adjustments on the go The biggest surprise between these two is to see a half go by without any touchdown. Unless something dramatically changes, that'll be the case here. Good carry by Ray to get it up across midfield to the Winnipeg 50. 12 seconds left. How close do they have to get? Bearing in mind they do have the breeze at their back for Sean Fleming. I'd say Fleming could hit one from 60 right now. Well, they'd be close enough now then. Right at the 50, take a 57-yarder to take the lead into the locker room. Oh, I don't think there's any question he's got the leg to hit from uh, 60 yards out with this wind behind him today. It has steadily gone from right to left in your screen. So 12 seconds. Time for a play. Get it a little closer at Herbie. A lot closer. First down and then some. To the 35 easily within Fleming's range now. 
to send the Eskimos to the locker room ahead. Five seconds on the clock, and Fleming is coming on. Well, neat little play to Ed Herbie. He's such a great target at six foot two, and just a little underneath route. Was there a pick? Maybe a little bit of rub on the outside there, but Herbie picks up some valuable yardage and makes Sean Fleming's task that much easier. From a 57-yard try to this one will be 42 for Fleming. And he's had, you know, two for three on the season, one for one today. He's career 73%, so highly efficient. And a timeout called against the Bombers now. Make Fleming think about it a little bit more. Why not? Well, in previous meetings, they could really rack up the points. They collectively, uh, back in August last year, had over 70 points. And they met in the Western Final. It was 33-30 in that one. So to see, as said, only 11 points on the board in one half of football, pending this field goal, of course. Well, the defenses on both sides have been terrific in this first half. You know, the coverage has been solid. There's been enough pressure up front to, to keep the quarterbacks off balance. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good first half of football. It has, the, and the offenses have been able to move the ball at times. This, 42 yards away for the lead to the locker room. And he gets it. With no time left in the clock, the Eskimos move ahead 8-6 to six on that 42-yard field goal by Sean Fleming. Still a lot of football left to be played, not only here, but part two of the doubleheader as well. We'll head back. Wendy, CFL live at the half. And our studios. Tom Higgins and his Eskimos set to start the second half with a two-point lead here in Winnipeg. Here is Greg Musselman with Bombers head coach Dave Ritchie. Well, Dave, uh, your defense played well. Special teams certainly a big improvement. Offensively, you moved it, but it uh, looked like some breakdowns there. Uh, we had a few breakdowns, but uh, defensively, uh, we can't let him win when he has the win because he's a real good field goal kicker. And uh, we've got to move the ball into the win because we're going to get it in the fourth period here. But, uh, you know, hey, things happen out there. Just hope they start to see some of them. Good luck in the second half. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Sounds like he's not too happy with the officiating in that first half. Well, he, he's never happy with the officiating. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see anything that was missed out there. But I think the thing that was missed was a lot of choreography between Gahari Jones and Chad Plummer. And if they can get that on track, that's going to help. Second half getting underway, going against the win. The Bombers are. They elected to kick, of course. They want the win in the fourth quarter. Just a two-point game, Edmonton in front. You have to think that fourth quarter is going to be pretty significant right down to the wire. Ricky Ray getting set to go to work again for the second straight quarterback, uh, quarter, I should say, with the win. That's how things stack up. I mean, you talked about, I mean, those numbers are definitely affected Kari, Kari Jones with some of the blown routes and the miscommunication. Yeah, I did. Really was. There wasn't a lot of great things that happened for Kahari, but uh, no interceptions. Ricky Ray had the one that Milo Lewis picked off. But I thought, all in all, it was a pretty good half for Ricky Ray. He has the lead. He's come into a hostile environment. Did a great job in the first quarter into the wind. And now he's got to take advantage of the wind at his back here in the third. Eskimos with a two-point lead to start. That safety is the difference. Ray under pressure gets it away. Completes it to Jason Tucker. He had a quiet first half, but he's on the receiving end there for a first down up across the Edmonton 50. Well, both teams know that each other's going to play a lot of man-to-man, -man, and when you do that, you try to run a lot of crossing routes and just have people chase you. That time, you know, about five people all came together in the middle of the field and crashed, and one of the guys that snuck through was Jason Tucker to, to make that catch and uh, get a first down on their first possession here in the third quarter. It's a big first down to start this second half for the Eskimos up near midfield. Ray handing it off to Mike Pringle. Straight up the middle and gets a couple of yards. Not a very active first half for Mike Pringle. I'm sure he would like to touch the ball a lot more. And only seven carries you see, as you see, and we've documented that he needs well over 20. And you know, should Edmonton have the lead in the fourth quarter into the win, that will be very critical to see what kind of production Mike Pringle has. It's always been his best quarter, the fourth quarter, during his heyday with the Montreal Alouettes. He seemed to get stronger as the day wore on, but the Owls love to run the ball more than the Eskimos do, especially with the great receivers they have. Incomplete for Terry Vaughn. It was the system that Montreal had, too, and more built around Pringle, the way their offense was. 
Well, listen, it's no secret my feelings on this. I think Mike Pringle is uh, one of the greatest backs to ever play in this league, but I think Edmonton uh, misses John Avery. I mean, John Avery led the league in rushing last year, but he also uh, caught the ball very well, and uh, John Avery had 45 catches last year. I doubt that Mike Pringle is going to have 45 catches, so he's going to ha have to make up that in rushing yardage. He's only the second in history to rush for over 14,000 yards in his career, of course, the all-time leader, George Reed is the leader. That punt by Fleming bounces into the end zone and Marvin Coleman watches it and no attempt to return that. They give up the point on a 70-yard punt and it is now a three-point game. Edmonton in front, 9-6. With that single, the punt single by Fleming, it's now a 9-6 game. Edmonton leading by a field goal. Charles Roberts with the ball for Winnipeg. A good yard attempt first down. They pick up another first down up across the 45 for the Bombers. Well, and I think the offensive line of Winnipeg would love to keep doing that and just slow down this pass rush. Kelvin Powell initially, look at him. He comes up, and they just take care of him. That's the key. Get rid of the middle linebacker when you want to run up the middle and you're going to have success. And on their opening possession of the third quarter, the Bombers pick up a first down. Up at the 47, Roberts again. This time, wrapped up nicely, taken down. Rashad Jinty with the tackle there. Was added to the lineup this week with the injury to Alfred Payton. And sets up a second and long now, a gain of a, about a half a yard only. Second and long certainly hasn't intimidated the Blue Bombers, though. They got in all kinds of trouble in the first half with a couple of holding penalties, and each time Jones found a man for a big game. See what they do in this passing situation here. Good coverage. Attempted for Robert Gordon. Malcolm Frank is right there to knock it away. So third down, and Troy Westwood will be coming on to punt it. And that's strictly get trips to the field, and you got Bobby Gordon on the backside one-on-one. -on -one. You've got to have him beat the coverage, but pretty good coverage there by Malcolm Frank. That play was designed to just let Bobby Gordon go one-on-one, -on -one, but the defensive back, Malcolm Frank, was equal to the task. It's a much better day punting for Westwood after really a tough night in Ottawa on Friday night. This one into the wind and keeps it low. Winston October with it. Across the 30, locks around up the middle. Could be gone. Has a block. Westwood's the only one back. But he does a good job to turn him back inside. And they do get him down. Harold Nash saves it inside the 20. But a big return. Just talking about how the Bombers were better on special teams. But they give up a big return there. Winston October. Lots of room to run. And the Eskimos are in business early in the second half. Bob Cameron, 23 seasons, all with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. No one has punted a football longer in CFL history than he has. Over 3,000 punts, 134,000 yards, more than that. And this is what happened at halftime as Bob Cameron was honored. An emotional day for him as he and his family are uh, brought out and honored at midfield and got a rousing applause from the fans here at Canada In Stadium. Bob Cameron joins us now. We'll get a chance to talk to him. We're watching Ricky Ray here after a great punt return, a 58-yarder by Winston October. That's how Edmonton got so close to scoring position now. Ray on that can, on that carry, and uh, boy, it was right after a, you know a good punt there by Troy Westwood. Pleased to welcome the guy that was before him for so many years, punting a football for Winnipeg. Congratulations on a great career, Bob Cameron, thanks and, and thanks for joining us now. And just tell me about the emotions of being out there and being honored by these fans. You know, it, it was it was really uh, surreal. I'm, I'm going around there in the far, in the car, and it just uh, it just sort of overcomes you when the fans are screaming. And and uh, it was it was really nice. It was a very nice gesture in the Bombers' part. I got a seven seven days down on Disney World with my kids, so it was it's super. Really. Yeah, the team may not show a profit now when they've got you and your 14 children. Though. I hope we're not getting blamed for that. <laughs> Toss to Pringle, and Terry Ray had a chance to wrap him down. Mo Kelly finally there. 
And I, just one final thing, as you, as you head off, and I know you have other stuff, a lot of other people to talk to, did you expect, when you first came out to Bomber Camp in 1980, oh. Oh. I mean, what kind of expectations did you have? Did you think you could ever be playing football? Uh, I, you know what? Honestly, I had sort of a defeatist attitude. I think I was cut by eight different teams four years in a row, and I finally get here, and I thought, boy, if I can just play one game, I'm going to be the happiest camper ever, and the, the last 23 is beyond anything I could ever have imagined. It's just incredible really you got to tell me one thing though I heard a rumor that you wanted to be the only person in CFL history to collect the salary and your pension at the same time no, I, I, I talked like that it was a joke and then when, when the years went on and I started getting closer to it I thought boy maybe this isn't really a joke but yeah it, it never happened I had to make it to 50 and that's certainly not happening now well, Sean Fleming with a field goal there from 19 up to give uh, more points on the board for the Eskimos but we talk about great kickers and the greatest punter in the CFL history and just check out those you must just get kind of tired looking at all those numbers you punted for what over 129 uh, kilometers or almost well that's more than 1200 football fields and uh, Bob Cameron that is quite a career and um, you got a birthday coming up later this month and I'm yeah I do for 49 I could you not have played till you were 50 you know just you know I, I it got to a point where honestly after the last couple of years a herniated disc in my back and both knees operated on and I'm punting with Troy Westwood, and he is out punting me. And I mean, you have to give yourself a reality check and say, you know what, this guy's better than I am right now, and I got to step aside and let him do his job. And, and he'll he showed it today. He's he's got a great leg, and he's just done a super job. And he, and he will. He'll be one of the top hunters in the league. Bob Cameron, it's been a pleasure watching you over the years, and, uh, and best of luck in the future. Dave. Well, thank you. Thanks, hey, Bob. I appreciate I'll you tell you up what. Here. I must have said it in my career in broadcasting and doing CFL games. If I said it once, I said it 150 times. You were the best punter I ever saw into the wind. And that is a tough thing to do. I know the conditions here in Winnipeg uh, always made you do that, but uh, what a wonderful career! And uh, you're a good citizen here in the city of Winnipeg. And uh, we hate to see you not playing, but we know you're around. And uh, what a great guy! Le Thanks Leaf has been by. some unbelievable memories. That's all I can say. Etched in my mind. Bob, forever. you go it's so far great. back. It's even when Leaf played, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's absolutely. That I tried time. out in Hamilton with Leaf. He doesn't remember 1978. Bob, thanks again. Okay, you're welcome. Best thanks. luck, Bob Cameron. Just beyond the reach there of Milt Stiegel from Kahari Jones. And so it'll be a punting situation as we say goodbye to Bob Cameron. Uh, Troy Westwood will be coming on to kick the ball away. Well, you get a few chances for home runs in a game, and this was a great matchup. Stiegel on Garrett to the outside with lots of field, and Kahari knew he had to really throw it hard into that wind. Uh, unfortunately, just a little bit too far. Good effort by Stiegel, but good recognition by Kahari Jones to try to hit the home run against that defense. It's another good punt against that win by Westwood. Harless rolls out of bounds. They don't get the big return this time, but Edmonton does have the ball and the lead here in Winnipeg. Today is Canada Day. Tomorrow could be another significant day in Canadian history. In Prague, the Czech Republic, they will announce the winner, the winning bid for the 2010 Winter Olympic Games. And Vancouver has an excellent shot up against Salzburg, Austria, and Pyeongchang, South Korea. And you can watch that coverage brought black in Vancouver to host it on TSN starting at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. James Duffy is in Prague. A very significant decision. Many feel will go Vancouver's way. Mike Pringle on the carry, trying the right side on first down. Eskimos leading at 12-6. Well, Mike Pringle, such a tough runner inside. Doesn't get to the outside much unless he breaks it off tackle and then bounces it outside. But, boy, pound for pound, no tougher running back to ever play this uh, game. And it was a difficult start for him, and his timing, he admitted that was off. He had only 14 yards and a... Just an awful game for the Eskimos against the Alouettes to open their season. Uh, as Jock Climby pointed out before this game, he did get 96 yards, albeit a lot of them came late when uh, it didn't matter as much. But he did seem to look like the Mike Pringle of old, a little more in that second game against Calgary. Illegal procedure, Edmonton 62, second down. Well, uh, Bruce Beaton got a little jumpy on the left side because Mo Kelly and Terry Ray were both up right over top of him. He knew the blitz was coming, and he just came out of his stance. And were those little things. I mean, you've got, you know, second and short. Now, all of a sudden, you got second and long. And those are the real tough things that hurt your offense. Terry Ray wouldn't comment about facing the Eskimos. He declined all interviews yesterday because he knew what the subject would be, and he didn't want to talk about it. Just imagine how motivated he is against this old club that let him go only weeks ago. 
That pass is completed for the Eskimos. Brock Ralph on the receiving end. And his first catch of the day for Edmonton. But Terry Ray, obviously, and they knew that this game would mean a lot to him. I don't think words had to be uh, spoken about it, Leaf, and he uh, maybe wanted to choose the high road. I think there was a lot of bitterness, though. You could sense that. And some even on the part, I think some uh, on the part of his good friend, Singor Mobley, of course, still with the uh, Eskimos. They were a great tandem as outside linebackers with Edmonton for the last few years. So it was a difficult situation when he was let go and a bit of a surprise. Pringle hit hard by Maurice Kelly as he gets through. Well, Edmonton gets their wish uh, in a running situation on first down. They get the three-man front for Winnipeg with Lamar McGriggs really either playing linebacker or rush end at the top of your screen. But, I mean, he plays the play pretty well, but a lot of pounding going on down there. You could hear it all the way up here in the booth, the helmets hitting. So, pretty tough battle here in the trenches. But Pringle's starting to touch the ball just a little more often here in the third quarter. Fans getting into it now. Incomplete for Ed Hervey. Ricky Bell on the coverage. Well, I'll tell you, that's really tough on the corner, Ricky Bell. They've got four receivers to the wide side of the field. Single coverage with a world-class sprinter back on the backside to the left of your screen. Ed Hervey runs the slant, but who's right there to make the play is Ricky Bell. And boy, that is designed strictly for Hervey, one-on-one. -on -one. Ricky Ray knows it. That's where he's going all the way. And the challenge was met by number 20, Ricky Bell, and that's a tough task. Sean Fleming has had some booming punts with this win, but this isn't one of them. Much shorter and out of bounds. The Bombers will have a much better field position. They have the football when we come back in Wendy CFL Live. All the news, scores, highlights, everything you need coming up on SportsCenter following our doubleheader with CFL. Tonight, 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific with Darren Detition and Lake Price and highlights on tour of this ball game and the one you're about to see from Calgary as well. All coming up on TSN tonight. Happy Canada Day. Rod Smith, Lee Pedersen here in Winnipeg. The Bombers trailing by six. Edmonton with the lead. Winnipeg football up at their 45. Handing off Charles Roberts. Boy, oh, he's able to find his hole, and he gets a little bit of help from an opponent as he's driven up a little bit further. Good carry for about 10 yards. He'll be close to a first down. Well, again, it's just the elusiveness of Roberts. Watch Sheridan. The hole's supposed to be there, but Roberts just sees it straight up here, and the slasher that he is, watch the cutback right there. There's the hole. He's got seven at this point. An Edmonton player hits him from behind, and he's almost got the first down, but... Winnipeg is doing everything right here in the third quarter into the win. Gary Jones keeps it in second and short and will easily have the first down across midfield. Past the midway point of this third quarter and Winnipeg looking forward to that win. Dave Ritchie talked about it before, having it in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and he simply said we've got to do the job in the third quarter to get to the fourth and they've only given up four points in this third quarter. 12-6 Edmonton leading, but They've got the ball, a little over five minutes remaining, and they're working it on the ground, which is great. It eats up the clock, and boy, it gives, uh, it's good for those offensive linemen again. I said it in the first half. When they get the fire out, that's when they have some fun. Inside midfield. Throwing. Chad Plummer. And he's taken down by Daryl Crutchfield. He's shy of a first down, but close to about the 45, 46 of Winnipeg. And a good high percentage play on first down into the wind. You run about a seven-yard hook, and boy, if Crutchfield doesn't make the tackle, Chad Plummer's got a lot of distance to go to. Only his second catch of the game. I thought he'd be more involved, but there have been some mix-ups between Plummer and uh, his quarterback, Kahari Jones. Second and short again. Taking the handoff, rolling out to his right. Jones calls his own number again. And easily has the first down near the 40. A great fake by Kahari Jones and Rashad Genty that's in the in the game right here. Watch how he crashes down and then Kahari's got all the time to come to the outside. But that's the key. If you don't stay at home, whoa! Gentry knows right there that he's been had. He's got the roller skates on, but there's nothing he can do. 
Once again, eating up the clock. Now four minutes remaining, and uh, this is pretty good for Winnipeg here in the third quarter. This has been a quick quarter. Yeah. This third quarter has. Passing now. Wanted Roberts by the looks of things, but it was knocked away. It's the third time that's happened to Jones today. I think Abdullah blocked it, and I think Kahari Jones caught it and completed it to himself. But again, you're right. A lot of... There's Abdullah. He's big number 90. Got his mid up again. I believe that's his second tip of the day. Here's Abdullah right up here, and he won't get in, but he goes up high in the air, and I do believe Kahari Jones uh, catches it himself. You see the right hand come up right here. Well, yeah. that's, then that's a completion, right? At least that's good for the numbers. Except it's a completion for a loss of eight. <laughs> okay, it's bad for those numbers. But it is a completion. Looking for Chad Plummer. No chance for a completion there. Crutchfield on him, and that one is overthrown. Yeah, I, I don't know what... Chad Palmer, I mean, I'm sure he's a great receiver and he tries hard and all that kind of stuff, but today it just seems like he hasn't quite been there because, again, he's got good speed and it just seemed like he was going half speed. And, you know, that's the kind of play where, you know, second and 18, you just want to let it rip and hope your receiver comes up with uh, the key play, but I don't know. Either he's a little sore today or I'm not sure he's, a, he's just uh, totally with it. Westwood to punt. Much better position. Beautiful punt again. Keeping it low and driving against a pretty strong wind. And this time, not much doing for Winston October, who's buried inside the Winnipeg 20. Mike Pringle, as mentioned earlier, is over 14,000 yards. Only the second ever to do that. George Reed, the all-time leader of the other. 2,065 rushing yards in one season. Of course, a single season record. All the 100-yard games, many of them with Montreal, of course, and, and with Baltimore before that. And what that translates into two MVP awards for him. And you know what I like? He's averaged 5.7 a carry throughout his whole career, and that's phenomenal in this league. Eskimos airing it up for Ed Herbert. Incomplete. Ricky Bell was on him. Well, Herbie's a world-class sprinter, but sometimes when you throw the ball that far downfield, the wind really plays some tricks on it. The wind's going just a little bit to Ricky Ray's left, and he had pressure, but he stepped up and threw a pretty good spiral downfield. But the wind, I think, just blew it away when Herbie's going to the post and blew it to the outside. it across the 25 still Fleming will be up to punt well terrific pressure up front by Winnipeg uh, Ricky Ray's got four receivers and he just doesn't have simply have time to pick one up Doug Brown 97 got in there so quickly but Ricky Ray still with his scrambling ability is able to get something out of it with the completion to Scott Robinson Nevertheless, the Edmonton Eskimos will have to punt and give the ball back to Winnipeg, which has been very proficient here on offense in the third quarter. Sean Fleming tried to kick it shorter to avoid the ends on his last punt. As a result, it only went eight yards. This one much better for Marvin Coleman in his 35. Picks up a block and slices his way across the 40 to about the 43. All the talk in Calgary. Kevin Federick getting the start at quarterback for the Stampeders. Of course, the owner's son, and that's a distinction he's probably tired of hearing, but he does get his start instead of Marcus Crandall, who was injured last week. That game is coming up. The second half of our doubleheader with John Wells and Glenn Suter. Right after we're done here in Winnipeg on Wendy CFL Live. Well, Rod, you made a great point when we were talking about this this afternoon. Kevin Federick was signed before his father bought the football team. So, I mean, that's, people should know that. This isn't daddy saying, let my kid play. He's got the well, maybe it is. I don't know. Well, Crandall is... <laughs> it's his team. You know, and a flag down with Plummer in the receiving end. 
flag down on that play, but, but Federick was brought into the club, yes, before his dad was in, and also Marcus Crandall, who is hurting, has not played Holding particularly well anyway. Winnipeg 54, first down repeater. Has not played particularly well. It didn't look that good yeah. for the most part in Edmonton. So this is a chance to give him a look and see what he does have. Absolutely. And uh, I have far too much respect for Jim Barker as a head coach to think that he's ever being told who to play. So uh, this Kevin has earned it, and we'll see what happens. And I know you and I are going to leave here today and turn it right on and see how he does. You bet. Had a great college career at Brigham Young. Yes, he did. Steve Young played there. And, uh, Steve Sarkeesian, yes, well correct. before him. Nice catch, nice pass. Robert Gordon on the receiving end, up near a first down, just a little bit shy across the 50. Wow, this is going to be interesting because he's a good yard short, and they're going to have to make a decision whether they go for a great pocket for Kahari Jones and Bobby Gordon from the outside. Watch him work to the inside. Now he's looking for a hole. He sees it, and he just slows down right there. Perfect execution by the wide receiver to stay in the hole, and Kahari Jones put it there, and they're going, well, it's second down. I thought it was third down. Excuse me. Pickup of 18, though, for Robert Gordon. It was a penalty. Charles Roberts. A little bit closer, but still looks to be just shy. Maybe a foot or two feet. So now's your, now, now comes your third down and short. Although I think they're close enough not to worry about that, especially in midfield. Well, I mean, it's interesting because there's 11 seconds left in the quarter. So, I mean, you know, had you let the clock run a little bit more, you would have punted with the wind. Yeah. All the more reason not to punt if they are shy and they're out to the sticks are out now to measure it. Now this is a gutsy call. Troy Westwood's coming in. You know what they could do is uh, we'll whistle it in and take a delay a game. Well, actually, they can't finish on a penalty of the quarter, so. Instead, I'm having a couple senior moments here. <laughs> is that what you call them? Is that what you and Bob Cameron call them now? <laughs> he, he and I can relate to each other. <laughs> So interesting decision on that third and short. They do punt into the wind. Flag down in the return by October. I'll tell you one thing. Tr uh, Troy Westwood's getting the ball off a lot quicker than he did last Friday night in Ottawa. So Bob Cameron's little phone call, I think, paid some dividends. Cameron spoke to Westwood after that game and when a punt was blocked and when he couldn't get another one off. Winnipeg 91. First down. Tyson St. James called the no yards there, though, but for the most part, Westwood's done well punting into this win, but uh, as you pointed out, though, what a difference. Now we've come to the end of the quarter, and if that could have been one play later, he would have been punting with the win. Absolutely. But, I mean, uh, there's going to be one more play to end this quarter, but, I mean, if you'd ask Dave Ritchie at the, at the half here, would he be happy to give up four points, Edmonton with the win, they'd say, without question. Give him four, let's go to the fourth quarter right now. Still within a converted touchdown of taking the lead, down 12-6, heading to the fourth quarter, last play of the third, Edmonton football, handing off to Pringle on the right side, they can still pull his way, Maurice Kelly has to come in and finish the job, and he's taken down after an eight-yard gain, as we have hit quarter time, still no touchdowns in this game, but Edmonton, another field goal by Fleming, and a 12-6 lead as we head back to Dave Randorf in the studio. Dave Ritchie's been missing a couple of uh, key players, not the least of which is his big fullback, Mike Sellers, who's standing by with Greg Musselman now. Greg? It's Rod, uh, Mike, I know you'd like to be out there. You look at the situation right now, just six points for a team that has so many weapons. Are you surprised with that? Yeah, I mean, win does have a lot to do with it. You know, it makes it a lot harder to throw the ball. And the fact that we had to change the offense around, being that I'm not playing, uh, it's kind of frustrating right now, but uh, we, we, we'll get back into it. Now, you're, you know, you've had the quick turnaround. Do you think that affects the offense at all? The fact that you played Friday in Ottawa, then it's, uh, you know, Tuesday afternoon and it's a hot day? No, we had a pretty good week of practice, so I think we'll be okay. I mean, everybody had a lot of rest, so. How about your own status? When are you going to be back in there? I'll be back next week for sure. That's guaranteed. I know they could have used you in the second quarter in that uh, inside the one-yard line. Oh, man. <laughs> I was standing right there at the one, too, and it was just, you know, killed me. But, you know, I... Everybody has injuries. I just had to take mine as it comes, so. 
I look forward to seeing you out there next week. Thank you. Guys? Thank you, Greg. That was the best chance that we had for a touchdown today in the goal line situation on actually a second and goal, and Wade Miller couldn't get in. They ended up kicking the field goal on that. But, yeah, they've been missing in today. Oh, they sure have. I mean, it does change your offense around all of a sudden. Uh, you know, Miller's not going to be a huge offensive threat, but Sellers can be with his receiving ability and, of course, when he gets to carry the football. They get a nice break, too. They don't play again until July the 10th, so a week and a half off for Sellers to rest up. Raheem Abdullah got the sack on Jones in that last play is third. They complete that one to Charles Roberts on the receiving end for a first down up across midfield for Winnipeg. Boy, and I'd like to see a lot more of that. Get the ball in Charles Roberts' hand. He's done some damage on the ground, and now he just gets out to the outside and waits till his receivers clear out for him. Terrific protection up front, and Roberts has some room to run, and this is when the fun starts. And he had to go at least eight or nine yards after he cut it to get a first down. And that's a huge pickup. I mean, second and 15 to pick up a first down. I mean, those are the kinds of little plays that uh, put some wins together for you. A six-point Eskimo lead, but Winnipeg has the ball and the wind in this fourth quarter. And that one with a flag coming out of the coverage on Robert Gordon, who's applauding the call. Well, Daryl Crutchfield, the corner, and Donnie Brady, the inside halfback, run a switch. They run a switch, and somebody banged into one of the receivers. Top right right there. There's a collision there on the inside receiver. I believe it was Marcus Howell. No, Bobby Illegal Gordon. contact on receiver. Edmonton, number 10. First down. So they call it a Malcolm Frank. And the end result is the sticks move. This Winnipeg drive continues. Now with the ball down around the uh, 42 of Edmonton. But 12 minutes now, fourth quarter. Kahari Jones out of the shotgun. Completes it. Goes right back to Gordon and a first down at the 30 of the Eskimos. Well, trips into the boundaries pretty interesting. There's the wide side, only two receivers. Now you come back weak side, you got you got Stiegel and uh, Bobby Gordon and Charles Roberts to the outside. That's a lot of firepower back to the short side of the field, and they just back off and totally leave Gordon wide open on the sidelines. Winnipeg's pressing now. They can get the first touchdown of this game. They'll retake the lead, swinging it out. Roberts, lots of room again. Charles Roberts, first down Bombers, they're in the red zone, down around the 17. And they had great success with that screen play in the first half, and they come back to it at a wonderful time to do it. First and 10 is a great down to run a screen. Matt Sheridan, 54, was once again out in front. Here's Sheridan, he didn't even have to make a block for Charles Roberts there. Charles Roberts was so wide open. Watch him slide across the formation now. They pick off A.J. Gass in the middle who had Charles Roberts, and that is a terrifically well-executed play. They spot it inside the 18, or the 19, I should say, on first down. Looking for the end zone. So close for Chad Plummer. Just a little bit beyond. Chad Plummer did a pretty good acting job there on Daryl Crutchfield. He slowed down just a touch to slow Crutchfield down, and then he tried to accelerate at the last second to make this catch. Pretty good strategy. He just couldn't lay out far enough. Well, I've been impressed with Crutchfield today. I mean, I, the newcomer, and uh, he has really played well in his man-to-man -man coverage. Really, nobody's had a sniff against him today. It was the man, Paul Lapolis, the offensive coordinator for Winnipeg. Nervously looking on, I'm sure, as they look to the end zone again! Touchdown, Winnipeg! They go to Milt Stiegel! His favorite target. Touchdown.
And with it, and that convert, Winnipeg has regained the lead. The Bombers leading Edmonton 13-12. Just over 10 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Milt Stegel, 19-yard touchdown reception. And it's given Winnipeg the lead again. Three catches, 55 yards. He's got the touchdown. The first touchdown of this ball game. Couldn't come at a more opportune time for Winnipeg. Now kicking off with that win to the fourth quarter and a one-point lead. Deep kick by Westwood. Well, they add a point. Winston October wants no part of a return. Wisely so. Give the Bombers another. Well, let's go back and take a look at Milt Stegall's terrific effort and formation. So watch Wade Miller here. Bruce comes to the inside. He picks him up. You do the little things right, good things happen. They get great protection for Kahari Jones. And Milt Stegall gets position on the rookie, Rob Grant, and that's a touchdown. We'll have one more look at it, and I'll show you why Kahari Jones went into that area. Because here's the safety. There he is in the middle. The safety goes this way to Trips. There's the area. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Quarterback sees it. Receiver runs the right route, and you get a big touchdown. Milt Stegall had two touchdowns last week in the first half against Ottawa. This one is looming large as Pringle takes the ball, and they spring him out and push him out. Wow, look at this. The crowd's really into this. They kind of like it when a plan comes together. Hold them in the third quarter. Now uh, you've got the wind at your back. And Milt Stegall, I mean, I don't know. Rob Grant, he didn't have any help in the middle, and he really gambled big time. And the rookie got burnt by one of the best that's ever played slot in this league. And you know what? You can't see it, but he was sitting beside Whitaker, so somebody will still sit with Whitaker. The last two MVPs. Hook up for that touchdown. Milt Stegall last year, Kyrie Jones the year before. Pringle coughs it up. Kevin Lesroot falls on it. Still Edmonton ball. But clearly, momentum has shifted here at Canada Stadium. And it's third down. Well, again, momentum shifted. The crowd is truly into it. Uh, it's the home opener. It's Canada Day. There's a lot of things at stake. Bragdon writes in the West and. What a hit by Milo Lewis here to knock the ball loose for Pringle. He wouldn't have had the first down regardless. And all of a sudden, a red-hot Winnipeg offense is going to get the ball back. And Tom Higgins knows that the third quarter could very well be his nemesis in this game. Although, don't forget, in the first quarter, Edmonton did a terrific job into the wind on offense. They really did, and they need to again. Only this time, they are behind. And field goals are a whole lot tougher the way they're going now. Pretty good punt by Fleming. Hangs up. Taken down, Deion Whitaker is back returning punch for Winnipeg and gets up to the 40 on that return. Bombers leading it 14-12, under nine minutes left in Wendy's CFL Live. Last time they had the ball, the Bombers drove for a touchdown. Looking to do it again. But this pass is incomplete. He's right back looking for Milt Stiegel, who had that touchdown for Winnipeg. As Kari Jones points to himself, my bad. Well, this touchdown reception is worth one more look. Uh, Kahari Jones with the trips to the wide side of the field, and he gets what he wants backside on the short side. That's where Milt Stegall is his best when he's to the short side of the field. A good pattern and a great throw, and first touchdown of the afternoon, and uh, Winnipeg first time that they've been in the lead today. Chasing an ex-Eskimo great Brian Kelly, who is next on that list. All-time touchdown receptions. Gordon on the near sideline, right at the wants to see where that placement is, looking for that first down. He's very close as he discusses the spot. And that is a terrific pattern run by a very well disciplined receiver. Watch Bobby Gordon at the end of this. He is coming back to the quarterback. Any separation he had from Malcolm Frank, and there wasn't much. He kept by coming back towards the sidelines. He wouldn't allow Frank to get in there and make the play. And that is a perfect out pattern by Bobby Gordon. He knows how to, well, he really knows how to run, though. Concerned about where they'd spot the ball, and now the sticks cross the field. They have a measurement here coming. Very close, obviously. 8.04 in the clock here in the fourth quarter. They come up a little bit short. I'm sure at this stage, Dave Ritchie will probably go for it, but 
Although Gordon came up a little bit short, some people say, well, he should have gone farther. He sure did one thing right. He came back to the quarterback, and any young receiver watching, that's what you've got to do. You worked so hard to get separation. Don't give it up. Third down and just a few inches shy. Here's where they missed Mike Sellers. Without their huge 280-pound fullback for these short-yarded situations. Probably a keeper for Kahari. We'll see. Well, they got somebody right on the nose. Kahari Jones takes it himself. Didn't need much. Well, one area where Winnipeg is better this year is having Mo Elwanibi at center. We haven't really talked about him today, but this they are much more solid with him at the center position. And even with Steve Charbonneau right on his head there with A.J. Gassian right behind, they are still able to pick up that half a yard and keep those drives going. And there you see Mo right in the middle of the screen, and he gets off the ball quickly, and Kahari gets the necessary yardage. But, you know, where is Winnipeg better this year? I know for a fact they're better at center. Had been a tackle when he first came into the CFL from the NFL with the BC Lions. Worked his way to the interior part of the line. And a center this year. Handing off Charles Roberts and taken down there by Genty. Well, this group, I think, had a pretty good afternoon. The offensive line for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. You've got Dave Mudge in the tackle, Dan Getfi in the tackle, Matt Sherrod, Eric Wilson, the guards, and, of course, Mo Elwanibi, who we just talked about at center. And, you know, when they've had to, I mean, running is not the focal point of this office, but when they've had to today, they've done a pretty nice job. And those two screens that they've thrown were picture perfect. Opens some beautiful holes, as you pointed out, for Charles Roberts. 6.30 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Still a two-point lead, Winnipeg, with the ball near midfield. Second down, flag coming down. Jones takes off and slides in and loses his helmet in the process. Just shy of what would be a first down, pending the call. Well, they got Dave Mudge on the left side, uh, on the right side of the offensive line for holding. And holding. Winnipeg 68. There he is right there. He's working on Rashad Genty, the newcomer in the lineup. And here it is. Genty gets positioned to the outside. And as Kahari Jones breaks contain, you see the left hand come out of Mudge. And like Mike Sellers a couple of times last week in Ottawa, losing his hat. Well, those are tough penalties. 6.18 to go. You've got a two-point lead. You're driving with the wind. And, boy, all of a sudden now second in a bunch. And, I mean, there's not a lot of plays in the, in the playbook for second and 18 against the tough Edmonton defense. Second and one. Knocked at the line again. Raheem Abdullah, the third time today. Knocks it down at the line of scrimmage, and that one couldn't come at a better time for the Eskimos. Oh, my, oh, my. No kidding. I mean, Abdullah has had just a terrific game. Here he is on the left side of your screen, and this is just extra effort. He's working. He's getting pounded. He's getting pounded, but he knows he's got one thing. He's got a lot of height, and he can disrupt any quarterback's best plans. And Kahari Jones had Stiegel over the middle, but he couldn't get it to him. So Troy Westwood stands back at his 30. He's got the wind in his back and needs a nice one to hem the Eskimos in. Carries nicely for Winston October, but a flag is down as he gets up to the 24. Edmonton football, down by two, 5.35 to go here in the fourth in Winnipeg. A look at the game story brought to you by SportCheck, Canada's largest sporting goods retailer. SportCheck, the best, the best value. Well, a couple of significant things here. I mean, the only touchdown of the game is Kahari Jones is right there. And I think another significant thing right here, only 11 carries for Pringle. And I know it's a bit of a dilemma with their offense. What do you do? Throw a run, but that's just not enough in their scheme of things. Because of a penalty against Edmonton, Winnipeg gets to move up and kick it again. And yet it pays off. Troy Westwood with a beauty to take the Eskimos inside their five. Rolls out of bounds. No chance for Winston October to do anything with that. 50-yard punt and on a day when the Bombers honored Bob Cameron after 23 years. Westwood is 
They're doing a very good job in the punting department, especially after the debacle in Ottawa yeah. a few days earlier. 50 yards, uh, net of 50, no return. You know what Bob Cameron told me yesterday? He said, Leaf, Troy Westwood's going to be a great punter. He just needs some mileage out there. He said he will be no worse than third in the league. He said maybe Duncan O'Mania and Calgary and Noel Prefontaine, who's returned to Toronto, might have a better average, but Westwood at worst will be third in the league in punting, and I believe it. The Eskimos have to start on their four-yard line. Barely five minutes to go. They're down by two. Jason Tucker on the receiving end and tackled immediately by Dave Donaldson. A nice tackle by him. And consider this, because of the wind leaf, a 40-yard field goal would be remarkable. And this is what the Eskimos have to start thinking about. And we saw, I mean, this wind has not let up either. And uh, we saw Sean Fleming in the warm-up. Keep in mind that about 38 yards was a challenge. I mean, he could make it, but it was a challenge. But before they can even think of getting to that point, they've got to drive a long way. <laughs> and it's second and long now. Eskimos. The crowd's into it. Ricky Ray standing in his end zone. Oh. Airing it out. Hangs up, and oh, it looked like it was caught by Ed Hervey. A flag comes out, though, in the coverage by Ricky Bell. Wouldn't this be a big play for Edmonton? Pass interference, Winnipeg number 20, first down. Well, and the difficult nature of this is this is a very poorly thrown football. It just begins to wobble, wobble, and Herbie comes back to it. Bell's trying to fight through. I mean, I don't know. I mean, those are tough calls to me on a defensive back. Uh, you know, I don't think he totally disrupted Herbie, but a huge break for the Eskimos. The matchup really has never developed. Kirby with, uh, I believe, only one catch so far in this game. So they call the interference against Winnipeg and Ricky Bell, and it's a 34-yard game. And Ricky Ray with lots of time and just takes off up the middle. First down and then some. Across midfield to about the Eskimo 52, and what a turn of events in the last two plays for Edmonton. Under four minutes on the clock. And Ricky Ray, uh, Ray recognized uh, Winnipeg only rushing four people. And you know what? When the linebackers all drop out, which they don't do very often for Winnipeg, there are some enormous holes. Look at this right here. That's what Ricky Ray sees. He says, heck, I can go 10 before anybody comes near me. And a couple of nifty moves right there to bounce off a tackle and pick up some great yardage. So all of a sudden, you've got a penalty to Ricky Bell. You've got a terrific run by Ricky Ray. It would look like doom and gloom for Edmonton is uh, looking pretty good now as they're across midfield. And the only thing going Winnipeg's way right now, as we discussed before, that wind, which means Edmonton would certainly have to get closer than they are now to go for a field goal. 3.37 on the clock right now. And an injured player, Rylan Wickman, the Winnipeg linebacker, down on the field. Well, the way this game has gone, would you expect it to be any different for a finish? <laughs> I'd be disappointed if it went any other way. Absolutely. 14-12, low scoring, but a lot of exciting plays. And even though the offenses haven't been able to rack up the big points, they have been able to move the football. Defenses, for the most part, though, have been brilliant. Well, this is a gut-wrencher for both coaches. We see Dave Ritchie, we saw Tom Higgins, and... Heck, you know, these are two quality football teams fighting for every inch of the turf out there. And... They're probably a little tired. I know Mike Sellers said they had a great week of practice, a lot of gas in the tank, but I'll tell you, the big boys out there on both lines got to be feeling it. Uh, not a lot of recovery time right now in the CFL. Edmonton last played Thursday night, Winnipeg Friday night in Ottawa. A little play fake. Pressure on from Harold Nash, who's blitzing. Nearly got to Ricky Ray, who threw it away. Incomplete. I really think he wanted to go to Mike Pringle, and it looked like Pringle was open off the play-action fake, but uh, Ricky Ray saw something downfield a little farther. Well, every play now gets more crucial as we go on. 317 remaining, Edmonton uh, second and long. Three ten and counting. Nearing that warning. enough for a field goal yet. Into coverage, Terry Vaughn wanted a call and doesn't get one. Vaughn thought there should have been a penalty. 
Well, and Dave Donaldson's made a couple of key plays in this fourth quarter. He doesn't get a lot of playing time. It just shows you the depth on this Winnipeg team when he's their seventh defensive back. He's in the game right now covering Terry Re or Terry Vaughn, rather, man-to-man. -man. And, boy, he was right on his hip the whole way. 2.57 on the clock, the three-minute warning. Can Edmonton get close enough to take the lead again? They're down by two. Hey, don't forget to vote for the Rogers AT&T Wireless Player of the Game. To vote via the Internet, go to the CFL.ca. To vote using text messaging on your cellular phone, type Go CFL. And you enter the initial of the team and your player's jersey number, Rogers AT&T Wireless. Imagine getting more from your phone. Any suggestions, Mr. Patterson? Well, I've got a couple. I mean, you could, you could go easily W85 or you could go E90. That's how you do it if you want to vote. And uh, boy, Raheem Abdullah, three tips and a sack. Who could argue against him? Milt Stiegel is the only touchdown, but defense is ruled in this game, and it'd be hard to argue Raheem Abdullah knocking three down. His team trails, and they're punting. Taken at the 20. Deion Twitter looking to make amends for a mistake earlier in this game that led to his safety. And his return takes him up to the 35. Third all-time in touchdown receptions. The leader in Bomber history in receiving yardage and three catches, 55 yards. Most importantly, that one for the touchdown that put Winnipeg on top in this game. How about that last year? The MVP in the CFL, the outstanding player, 23 touchdowns in one season. It's incredible. ground up over the 40. Winnipeg would just love to grind it out now, push them back, use the wind to their advantage and force Edmonton if they get the ball back to go a long distance and be against that win for a field goal try to win. And they're just in the tease area right now, second and four, a nice cutback by Roberts there and uh, what do you do? Pass or run right here, 220. You do not want to give the football back to Tom Higgins offense. There have been two turnovers in this game, both committed by Edmonton, one on downs in the first quarter, one a key interception by Milo Lewis off Ricky Ray in the second quarter. None since. Lots of time for Kyrie Jones, scrambling around, takes off, gets the first down, and a big one for Winnipeg. Coming up after this game, very shortly, off to John Wells and Glenn Suter at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. Kevin Federick getting the start for the Stampeders against the Ottawa Renegades. The Stamps still looking for their first win of the season. That is coming up. Our Holiday Bash Canada Day in a doubleheader here on TSN. Not done yet here though in Winnipeg. 2.07 and counting now on that clock. Those valuable seconds ticking away against Edmonton with that first down for Kahari Jones and the Blue Bombers. Nursing a two-point lead with the win. Charles Roberts, they keep it on the ground. And why not when you have Charles Roberts running the way he is? Good gain at first down for about eight yards. Well, I give a lot of credit to Dave Mudge and especially Eric Wilson, the right guard. They just did a super job moving. Here they are. And my, oh, my, Eric Wilson, Dave Mudge. Here's Wilson here. Here's Mudge. Watch the flow here. This allows Roberts to cut back up in here. All you want is push when you got a back like Roberts. He will find the hole, get a neutral zone there, get the push so there's no penetration, and he can make some yards, and he gets nine. So second and one. And this time, Edmonton's defensive front rises up. How big is that? Well, Eric Winnipeg to punt. Eric Wilson uh, was uh, running the trap coming from his right guard spot, and he tripped in the backfield and kind of fouled everything up for Roberts. So. I mean, what do you do if you're Dave Ritchie? This is pretty gutsy. 129 remaining. Uh, I definitely looks uh, short by half a yard. Well, the last time in this situation he punted. Mind you, they are the kind of confidence they have up front right now. And that keeper by Kahari Jones, it does look like they 
or at a range that they could make, but you want to play around with that 129 on the clock. Well, again, uh, this is where you miss Mike Sellers, the big 270-pound fullback, uh, to at least either carry it or lead. But I think he's made up his mind. He's going to try to seal the deal right here. We don't see any Troy Westwood. That was he's... Mike Sellers, sorry. Westwood stays at the sideline. Third down and about a foot. They're not punting. They can drive a dagger into the heart of the Eskimos with a first down here. And they get it. The Winnipeg drive continues. Edmonton may not get this football back. 1-12 at the clock. Big Mo Elowanibi leading the charge for Kahari Jones. Why did he ever? Because he has Steve Charbonneau right on his nose with a linebacker in behind waiting to come over the top. And unless your center can control that nose tackle, you're in trouble as a quarterback on the sneak. Again, for the second time in this second half, Mo Elwanibi, there he is, 64. He held the flag in the pregame ceremonies honoring Canada Day, and he's had himself a whale of a ball game. Certainly has. Under a minute now. Keeping it on the ground. Roberts. He finds some room. He gets good blocking, and he finds his way through. And another good gain inside the Edmonton 50 on that play. They've had great success running the trap with both guards today and then letting Charles Roberts just pick his hole. If it's not there on the trap block, he cuts back against the green, which he's so good at. And much like what Mike Pringle's been able to do throughout his career in the fourth quarter, really seal the fate for opposing defenses. Charles Roberts has done it for his team today, and uh, obviously nobody could be happier than the offensive coordinator, Paul Lapolice. Well, for the last three years, Including this one, the Bombers have started a season at 2-0. They hadn't done that since 1990 when they last won the Grey Cup before they did it under Dave Ritchie. Well, and all three games have been tough. I know they had were the beneficiary of six turnovers in BC to win that game, but I mean the Ottawa team was a kind of an ugly win, and uh, this hasn't been an oil painting, but it's been effective. They'll take it. The W is the main thing. Absolutely. And if they go to the 3-0. Takes it there and is hauled down. Now, Milt Stegel certainly had, in many ways, the biggest catch, obviously, of this game. The only touchdown of this game, Lee. Yep. Safety gone in the middle. Allows Siegel all kinds of room in there. And Kahari Jones read it. That's the first key. You've got to see it. He saw it, and his receiver was in the right spot. You can cast your vote on the internet or text messaging. Go CFL. Is it W85? Is it W1? Or as we'd also suggested for Edmonton, E90, Raheem Abdullah up front for the Eskimos. We've got well, a few choices here. Well, I think in a league that's all about big plays, uh, my vote kind of goes for the big play today, and it sure was Milt Spiegel. He is so reliable. I mean, how many times you just waiting for it to happen? It, it happens. It's been an amazing career for that man. 44 seconds on the clock. Now, should Winnipeg go on and win, it certainly appears the Bombers will. What does that do to what is expected to be a really competitive West Division if they can start off at 3-0? I know you got Saskatchewan at 2-0, but this really gives them the upper hand on Edmonton that they missed out on getting last year when they had to go to Commonwealth for the Western Final. A very significant win, even though it is early in the season. These are big games. Well, you know what, Rod? I always said the wins in July or June were just as important as the ones in October. So... I mean, it's a great win, and, uh, you know, these two teams have uh, a dislike for each other. They very well could meet in a Western final again, so, it, you know, you set a precedent. I mean, Winnipeg's going to probably walk away with a win here. They don't play, I believe, till kind of back-to-back -back late in the season, so it's a long time since they'll, till they'll see each other again. We'll talk about how competitive the West is. Calgary needs a win just to keep pace with what's been going on. Stan Peters looking for win number one. Ottawa is there. The Renegades one and one, losing a heartbreaker to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers Friday night. It's coming up the second part of our doubleheader, Wendy's CFL Live on TSA. Wow, well, uh, Ottawa's a fun team to watch. They Eric sure are. Tillman, Joe Pow Pow, uh, they got things sorted out there. Well, they gave this man enough headaches last Friday night. <laughs> what did they ever? Those nails were bitten right down, I'm sure. Well, you saw Tom Higgins and concern on his face. He's got Albert uh, Reese down on the field. Now he's getting up. I mean, they lost Alfred Payton last uh, 
week and now Albert Reese who a great defensive tackle a big load in there to handle and things don't uh, he looks pretty tender on that leg the Eskimos last played Thursday so playing again today on a Tuesday and they finish off the week in Hamilton on Saturday they play four games in 15 days now when you played in the CFL it was also a 19 league although a 16 game schedule which makes a difference, I suppose, as well, as you try to squeeze things in. Do you ever remember a schedule when you played being that tough? I don't remember a schedule being that tough. The toughest thing we did was we would go east, and we would play two games in the east. Over like what span? We could play a, a Wednesday, Saturday, something that close, but it was only two, as I recall. It's not four in this space. I mean, that's tough on the players. It, it truly is. Well, they've been working hard for this one. Short yardage situation on third down. Winnipeg keeps it, keeps the drive going, and will snuff out any chance Edmonton has of winning this ball game. 26 seconds to go on the clock and just a two point lead, but that's a big two points right now. And you know what? You got to blow a little smoke for Kahari Jones because he was a very patient quarterback today in a very tough, low scoring, physical, defensive game. And what he has done now is got three wins. He has yet to throw an interception and he's thrown touchdowns in every game at the critical stage. So my hat's off to Kahari Jones, who is the 2001 MVP in this league. And and threw a big touchdown to the 2002 MVP yeah. today. Wow, well, Kahari, he just doesn't hurt himself, and that's why you got to love him as a quarterback. No interception so far this season, and... Dave can smile now, I think. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers celebrate their home opener on Canada Day with a victory to improve to 3-0 on top of the West Division is Tom Higgins Eskimos fall to one and two well tough for Tom Higgins his team hung in there well but in the end it was the third quarter I believe for Dave Ritchie's Winnipeg Blue Bombers they only gave up four points when Edmonton had the win and when they got it in the fourth they took it full advantage a big touchdown by Stiegel and the Bombers move to three and oh you stick around because the game's over but TSN is just at the half another game is coming up it is the Ottawa Renegades taking on the Stampeders at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. Happy Canada Day.